good to keep the house of God clean. And then when we come in here, sometimes we don't notice, but we thank God for women like that. Amen. Thank God also. We congratulate our sister Rosie, second grandchild. Amen. Let's give her a big clap. Hallelujah. And we congratulate to his grandma for second time. Is it your third time? Second time. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Okay. Tonight I, I'm going to share a little bit with you before we pray. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is just to encourage you about what we are seeing in our days. And uh, I don't know if you know it, but we are really living in the last days. And uh, let's see what the scripture says in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. We've read the scripture many, many times, but I want, I want to read it again just to encourage us today to get ourselves ready for the things that are happening today so we don't lose focus of what God really wants us to do. Because sometimes in our business, in our, uh, you know, getting things ready, getting our life, getting our food, getting our daily bread, working and all, and everything that we do, sometimes we can lose focus and sometimes we can forget the reality. And in, in, in all of these things, I don't want us to lose focus of what is really happening today. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Do you know then that uh, in the last days, perilous times shall appear. And that's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, perilous times shall appear. The Bible says, uh, uh, men shall be lovers of their own selves, confessions, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and uh, unholy. In verse uh, 3, it says, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those things that are good, traitors, hating, high-minded, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And look at verse 5. I, I, I want to focus on verse 5. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, I, 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 I want us to just wait a little bit while, while I read the rest later. But if you look at the way things are going today, you and I can agree that we are living in the last days. Last week, or actually this week, not too long, we woke up on Sunday morning to hear the sad news that uh, uh, somebody has taken a gun in Las Vegas and killed about 59 people. I think they are still counting more than that now, more than 500 injured, and we were all shocked. We thought it was a terrorist, we thought it was somebody terrorist. But it turned out that this person that did this is actually a multimillionaire. Actually, somebody very, very wealthy, very wealthy person. So you begin to ask yourself, so people who do this acts are no longer poor people or disgruntled people with the government or people who are, uh, are angry with uh, uh, because they don't have money or some of these things. So things are all changing around us. You know, terrorism has got a new face today. You don't have to come from some certain Middle East country or some certain dark country to be a terrorist. Everywhere you turn, you find that people are all doing things that are contrary to the word of God. And the thing that is very, you know, making it even more plausible is that you find that, that the people, the things that God said don't do, people are doing it even more today. People are sounding trumpets and making a lot of noise just to destroy and to make our life more miserable. The days we are living in are truly last days. I don't know about you, but if you're not careful, in the midst of everything going on, you can forget what the Bible says. You can forget that the Bible actually predicts these things. Anybody say amen? Amen? If you read the book of Matthew chapter 24, every single thing you are seeing today is all in there. The Bible talks of rumors of war. It talks of hatred. It talks of nation against nation. It talks of abomination. It talks of, of, of truth breaker. It talks of, of, of higher level of immorality. Everywhere you talk, it's all happening. And so, the days we are living are becoming so dangerous. I remember once a, a mother telling me, say, Pastor William, where can I take my child? That my child will be safe. He said, because in my street where I live, all are drug pushers. We woke up, we, we, we're going to school, drug pushers are all calling my child, and all and all and all. They are not safe anymore. People are not secured anymore. There's a high tension in our society. People run to the Western world so, so they can get money and they can get security. But the security is threatening today. Because you lock your door, they find another way to come in. They blow up airplanes, they blow up trains, they blow people up in the stretch. Everywhere you turn, we are living in the last days. 
Let's not forget the people of God. Let's not take for granted. And that makes us more to be more determined. Because the Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of money shall what? What's called? Matthew chapter 24. The iniquity that we are seeing today, we've never seen it before. It is becoming more terrible. Even in the house of God. Even among people that call themselves Christians. And you begin to add all this together. And you wonder why Jesus says, watch. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Why Jesus says, if the day are not shortened, even the very elect shall be deceived. I'm not, I'm not trying to bring a Bible teaching here, but I want to assure all tonight that if we are not careful, the thing that is overtrained the world will overthrow us. So my brother, my sister, can I just remind you that we are living in days that we're going to remember what the Bible says. The Bible says when you see the cloud forming in the, in, in, in the, in the sky, when you see the cloud come, you know that the rain is about to fall. So can I say this to you? Every sign you are seeing today, in your government, the 666 number is already here. Everywhere you turn to, religious leaders are no longer preaching the gospel. They stand behind this pulpit and they tell you how to make money. They stand behind this pulpit and they give you 50 words. And, and I'm not saying those things around. I'm just telling you that the truth of the gospel, people go to church one way and they come out empty. Something is wrong somewhere. You begin to wonder and wonder and wonder. Love of God is not strong anymore. People used to have love for God, but now it's love for money, love for the world, and people now have itching ears. If they don't like the teaching you are telling them in your church, they cross next door to another church. That will tell them, uh, if they don't like that, they cross next door. And so because of that, a lot of multiplicity of evil. Men are threatening their wives, if you don't do this, I leave you. Women are threatening their husband, when my kids grow up, I leave you. And so divorce and, 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 and breaking up and, and marriage breakdown is all over today. So my brother and my sister, we are living the last days. The days we are living in are days that you and I need to take our belt, yeah? And tighten our belt. You and I need to wake up and be more alert. And remember that the Bible warns us of the days. And remember that the days today are so evil. Don't get trapped in the evil of the days. Don't allow the enemy to suck you in. Don't allow the enemy to grab hold of you. You got to remember that the days we are living in. But the Bible also tells me in the last day, I will pour out my spirit. The Bible says upon our flesh, upon you and me. In other words, don't fulfill the path of the last day when men grow cold. Fulfill the path when you will rise and hear and guide the Spirit of God in your life. Because that's what the Bible promised. That even though these are happening, but in these same last days, God promises to restore. He promises to renew. He promises to shine. And that is why when I go to churches, the first thing I look at is their program. How many churches are praying today? How many people pray in their home today? How many read their Bible? The Bible today is on the shelf. How many listen to gospel music? It looks like every time you take a step for the kingdom of God, there are 10 people trying to accuse you. Every time you move forward for the kingdom of God, there are 50 people trying to draw you back. So what do we do today? The Bible says, See this day know that in the last days perilous times shall come. So, people of God, make no mistake. The days we are living in are the perilous time. They are the evil days. There are days when men turn evil and they call it good. There are days when men see good and they call it evil. There are days when people look around you. So, the only hope for you and I is to return back to the God of our Father, to the God of our Father, Jesus Christ, to return back and stay firm and stay rooted on the Word of God and stay rooted on Jesus Christ. Because you know what, friends? If you're not careful, the spirit of the last days will crept and sweep you along with it. Because, you know, the mentality and the plan is that you think like the world think. You behave like the world behave. Let me tell you one of the thinking patterns of the world. One of the thinking patterns of the world is this. Well, this marriage is not working. I have spent 15 years in this marriage. Okay, now, time to change the gear. Woman or man, you find your way, I find my way, get a new one. 
That's the take a panel of the world, yeah? And so what happens? You go and find it. Ask someone here, ah, this marriage is talk. So you know what? Instead of going for a woman, let me go for a man, yeah? So what happens is that you begin to see a whole confusion all around. And what the thinking pattern of the world is coming to the church. Because you see, pastors saying to themselves, Oh, I spent 15 years with that person. It was a nice time, but it's not time to move on. Where does the Bible say that? Does the Bible talk about divorce? Does the Bible even condemn? Oh, but Pastor William, you are old fashioned. This is what you don't realize. The old fashioned gospel is a gospel that will lead you to eternal life. Amen. Yes. It's not the new gospel that people are talking about today. You can have different gospels. The only way to the kingdom of God, Jesus says, the road is what? Narrow. Let's not forget that. Can we forget that? We, we think that, you know, we're the new way of thinking. What new way? The way that Jesus taught is still the right way. You know, stay true to what God gave to you. Stay true to your marriage. Stay true to your, to, to your family. Stay true to the, to the house of God. Stay true. Not today. We are looking for the easy way out. Like the f plus machine. Or like the, uh, not the f plus one, what do you call it? The ATM machine. I got need fifty dollars. I go to the machine, put my card, get it out. So we're thinking. You no, know, sometimes with God, you got to actually wait upon Him. Somebody say Amen. You got to actually ask God. God, show me. God, lead me. God, direct me. Sometimes with God, you got to actually wait until He brings things past in your life. But because we are so quick, 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 we are so in a hurry to go somewhere. We still don't, we no longer have time. There is something that happens to a child of God when he waits. God builds your character. God builds strength upon you. God anoints you. God takes you on a journey. My brother, my sister, until you have been on a journey with God, you cannot tell a man how to go with God. You need that journey. So God will take you on a journey. So sometimes, in the midst of the peril you're going through, and the pain, and the lack of uh, answers, God said, wait. God said, wait. God said, wait. And when you wait on him, when you wait on him, when you wait on him, then it takes you on a journey of patience, of grace, of mercy, of love, of endurance. You know what, people of God, one of the things that I come to really align with God is that God Almighty doesn't make mistakes. His word is so true and it's so righteous. He has praised it, he has said it, and he will do it. So whether you like it or not, you're not going to change the word of God. I don't care how many people don't like me. God's word is still true. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one. Whatever God has put together, let no man put asunder. That's the word of God. A man may say, oh, you can put asunder, but the word of God said, put no asunder. The Bible tells me, in this last day, would you hold firm to what we believe? Because now is our salvation drawn closer than when we first believe. I don't know, maybe you are here tonight and maybe you are swaving up and down. You are looking at that person and you are mirroring, mirroring your life, mirror your life because of that person. You look at that society, you look at that community, that's how you mirror your life. Pray, can I tell you something? There's only one mirror you should look into, the word of God. For the Bible says in Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, chapter 12, verse 2, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he despised the shame, Bible said we should look unto him lest we grow weary on our mind. So what's going on today? So church of God, this word to encourage you tonight, to tell you tonight that you and I got to come back to that very stand that God gave to us. You and I got to come back and remember that the gospel that we are hearing, that the gospel that we heard before has not changed. And remember that all the things that people are telling you to do that are contrary to the word of God. Don't let it influence you. Friends, please listen very carefully. When you watch your television, there's a lot of things going on there to influence you for evil. You, you have the control, yeah? It's called remote control. On the remote control, there's a button called red. It's called off. Put it off. You, can, you don't have to keep listening to it. You don't have to keep watching it off. Because you know what? You are saying to yourself, I will not let that influence me. 
You are saying to yourself, I will not let that affect me. You are saying to yourself, this, this will not define me. That's a stand. For you to pollute yourself. I remember somebody came up to me and said, Pastor, oh, you don't understand. I was watching television and the person in TV said that, you know, God said that, uh, you know, he, he forgive us and we don't have to repent. I said, where did you find that? Oh, the, te- the person on the television said it. But is that the word of God? Men have become so lazy. We become so lazy to grab the word of God and see for ourselves what the Bible actually teaches. We become so lazy. And because of that, everything that comes, we grab them. My brother, even now, I'm telling you, don't just take what Pastor William said. Go and read the word of God for yourself. And see if this thing true. And see if this thing true. Many, many years ago, I challenged a lady that said that she was born... uh, I said, okay, I said, I was born like that and nobody can, she was angry with me because uh, through the ministry, I ministered, they love her, gave her life to Christ and they love her and wanted to stop the relationship. She came to me and she was going to punch me. She was very angry. But I said to her, why don't you discover it yourself? Go and read the Bible for yourself. Oh, Bible, Bible, I don't want to read the Bible. But that, now she read it. She went back home and she read the Bible. And she came back and said to me, you know what? You are actually right. The Bible talks about this, about that, about that. God can actually free me. Yes. Yes. So when you listen to the word that's going on in the world, you think that's the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. God Almighty is calling us to come back to him. And he's saying to us, my people, hear my voice. Because the days we are living are so evil, are so dangerous, that if you don't draw closer to me, if you, that's, why, that's why we come to fellowship. We come here on Tuesdays, on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, on a Friday. Why? So that we can be able to learn and draw closer and get to understand more the things of God and pray for one another and get encouraged. You know, friends, the days that are today are so evil that, you know, even if you walk out of your home and you are taking your Bible, people will laugh at you. They will mock at you. They will say, you, a Christian, you. Why? Why are you a Christian? Why? And because of that, there's a temptation for us not to live righteously. There's a temptation for us to be like the world, to be like everybody else. Because to be honest, nobody wants to be different. Everybody wants to be sort of like accepted. Because when you are different, you're not accepted. So what happens is that we have it. There's a pressure to be like the world. You know what the Bible says? The Bible tells us, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole friends, the whole world, the whole fame, and lose his own soul? But you see, the question of eternity is not very rare in our heart. We don't think about it. People only think about eternity when they are going to die. Oh, I remember somebody, oh, come, Pastor William, to come to my bedside because, you know, I don't think I'm going to make it. I went to the bedside. Oh, I want to give my life to Christ now. Well, well, I like to lead people to Christ like that, but it may not always be. Because we don't know when our deaths will come. We don't know. We don't have, nobody knows if you're going home right now or something. Nobody knows that. So what am I saying tonight? Let us remember the word of God and keep the word of God and stand the word of God. Stay on the word of God. Take your Bible out again. Read your Bible. They may laugh at you. They may make mockery at you. They may look at you down. They may even say things against you, but I want to tell you tonight. Don't let anybody sway you. you do you know what the Bible talks about? If people, uh, if somebody is your enemy, feed that person. Think about that. That's a high standard. Imagine you cooking your food for the person that wants to kill you. Imagine blessing somebody that hates you. But today, people are actually doing opposite. You know, you're my enemy, let's kill him. God, I pray, send fire and destroy that person. Where in the Bible do you see that? You know, it doesn't work like that. God is bringing us to a level where we can be able to align with His word. The Bible says, the love of God constrains us. What am I saying, Lord? Because I'm telling you all this because to point out that the days we are living are so evil. So let's get our heart right. Let's get our heart aligned with God. Let's ask God to help us to stay faithful, to stay true, to stay holy. That even everywhere you turn, you know, friends, I have a lot of friends. I've met many people in my life. I've seen so many things in my life. Many, many people have challenged my faith. They've laughed at me. I, I, I was in a, uh, sitting down in water, and the, 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 the lady was saying to me, 
She said, oh, oh, Pastor, they were talking actually. And, and I was in the meeting because they were doing it like a, a birthday for me. And I didn't know this lady before she sat down. And she said, oh, you know what? Well, me and my husband were married for 40 something years. But now, we now, and we just, he, he just woke up and then he said he went his way. And so we are now like brother and sister. He said, but you know what? Uh, but I, I, I do what I want. I dress up, I make makeup, I, I have a few men there and then. And then they were all talking and I kept my mouth shut. I didn't want to spoil the occasion because when I speak, everything spoils, you know, so I kept my mouth shut. And they were all talking and talking. Oh, they were all talking and talking. And then they made a mistake. He said, oh, Pastor William, what do you think? Uh, and I said, you don't want to hear what I think. And I told them very clearly, I may offend you, but the Bible tells me this, this. And the woman said, but, 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 the woman said, yeah, leave. But there's this, there's this, why? Why don't you go to counseling? Why don't you come for prayer? Why don't you ask God to heal? Oh, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, because the easy way out is to say bye-bye. Yeah, that's the easy way out. That's what people are doing today. They are looking for the easy way out. How easy can it be for me to go out? You forget that the easy way out is the way that leads to destruction. So what, I, what, what we're coming back every time is to encourage you Christians to stay strong, right. stay true, stay holy, walk with God. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Don't allow anything to take your mind away. Don't allow even the enemy itself to pressure you to be like them. Oh, my pastor, all oh, my friends are smoking shish. Yeah? What do you call it? Shish? Hashish. No. Hashish. Hashish, yeah? They smoke. Poof, poof. Yeah? Hashish, yeah? And they are doing it. Yes, they can smoke. But you will be different. Because you know what, friend? Oh, you don't understand, Pastor William? All my friends are taking that. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, but you will be different. Because when you are different, then you are showing the love of God. Then you are standing for the kingdom of God. Because you know what? It's getting hard to find men who will take a stand for the kingdom of God. Today, sway. Yeah, if they go this way, we follow them. We follow them. And then we come to church on Sunday and we say, I'm forever. But the thing is that what you're not realizing is that you have to overcome on the Monday, on the Tuesday. So when you come to church on a Sunday, it's a, it's, a, it's a life of lie, hypocrisy. It's not working. Because when in your company they make a, an agreement to steal and you follow them to steal, you have just destroyed everything you've done on Sunday. But if you take a stand and say, No, I'm a child of God, they will laugh at you. They mock you, but you know what? You go back home, you lift up your hands, and you praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, tonight, many, many people come across our ways, and many times we hear the voice. We all get discouraged, we all get tired. True of us. True. Anybody want to agree with me? True. We all get tired, yeah, we all get discouraged. True. But you know what? It's not our strength, it's his strength. You know what? In our moment of great discouragement, let's go back to the Bible. The Bible says, walk in him. The Bible says, for as many as believe in him, to then give him the power to become the sons of God. The Bible says, for this reason, the son of man was made manifest that he may destroy all the work of the devil. The Bible says, in him is Lord. The Bible tells us of the great sacrifice that Jesus did. The Bible says he is our example. The Bible tells us that pleasure, pleasures are for a season. But then, you know what? They can cause you eternal damnation. So let's get all of the Bible again. And for those of you who no, who no longer read the Bible, can I encourage you? Get it out of your shelf. Get it out. Start to read the word of God again. Shine the light again. Let the glory of God fill your heart. Shine the light again. Let the power of God fill your heart. Let us stand for the kingdom of God. The Bible says, walk in the light. Light and darkness can never gel. Light and darkness, one must give way. Somebody say amen. amen. If you are light, darkness will give way. When you come into a room full of darkness, they will give way. I can tell you because it's not the first time people have, oh, this man has come. We, do, we can't talk anymore like this. And they change the subject. Because I have come in there. They won't talk that nasty talk when I'm there. 
Because darkness and light cannot mix. If not, they run away when I'm, when I'm coming, they are dispersed. Because you know what, friend? Let us be like that. Let our workmates, let the people that work with us, let the people around us know that we carry a light. Let them know that there is something about us. Then they will ask you one day, John, what is about you that brings shining light? And you can tell them about your Jesus. You can share it with them. This, this last days, finally, my brethren, there is something I see in this last day that is really troubling me. And that is complacency. You know, complacency is what leads people to do things that are wrong. You know, complacency is where people say, I have arrived. I know it now. I'm a Christian now. I, I've read the books now. Oh, pastor has blessed me now. I'm anointed now. I'm ordained now. And what happens? Slowly, slowly, we begin to go. This is why I ask the question. Two disciples of Jesus. Two, yeah? They were going on the same road of Emmaus. And Jesus joined them. And they were talking with the master. They were talking. They were talking. But they didn't know it was the master. They didn't even know it was Jesus. Think about it, yeah? Think about it. Let's say you are married here, yeah? Yeah, and your husband decided to change his satire or whatever. And they come to your house or walk in the street with you in the market. Some of you would probably know just by, you know, intuition or by, by the voice. But these disciples did not know it was Jesus with them. Now, this is my question. Why did it take so long? For them to recognize Jesus. Complacency. Why did it take them so long on the road to Emmaus? They did not even know that the person walking with them was their master. Hey! Uh huh. Something is wrong somewhere. Because, my brother, my sister, when you have the love of God flowing on the inside of you every day, you can know He is here. He is with me. When we talk, when we share, He is here. Some of us today, have failed to recognize the voice of our Father. We confuse who shall I marry A or B or C or D or F. Who shall I go? Oh, and all the confusion because we no longer hear the voice of our Master. We have become complacent. We feel that we have achieved. We feel that we have overcome. We feel that we have come so. So our prayer life now is no longer forceful. We don't pray anymore as we used to pray. We don't wake up to pray anymore. We don't fast anymore. We take it for granted. We come to church and our hands are still for the pocket because we know, we know, oh, that one, let him praise God. Let him lift. Oh, I've done that before. Oh, I've been so. No, no, you don't understand. Two years ago, I used to be everywhere, but now I've overcome. So my hands are in my pocket, yeah? Oh, you don't understand. I used to pray more than Pastor Willie, but now I have overcome. So we begin to be complacent. I begin to let the light go slowly. And that is the dangerous part. When the enemies are fighting you, at your highest point, they can't defeat you. But when you begin to take it easy and take a break and sleep, Jesus said, when men what? Slept. When men slept. So the last days, can I encourage you right now? Get your oil again. Get your lamp again. Get it up again. And trim it. And put it higher. Somebody say higher. higher. Put it higher. Put it higher. Light the flame. Light the flame. Light the flame. Light it again. Because you know what, friends? If you don't light the flame, if you don't light the oil again, if you don't light the fire again, you know what happened? The enemy will say, ah, look at him. I got him now. And you don't want that. So tonight, tonight, let us remember what the Bible says. Because perilous time shall come, the love of many shall wash school. I'm going to tell you something that, that I believe, yeah? Are you, are you listening? I believe, this is what I believe, yeah? I believe that there is nothing too hard for God to do. I believe that if a man genuinely, sincerely pray to God, God Almighty will give him strength and grace and power to overcome. If you are not overcoming, if you are not defeating the power of darkness, something is wrong somewhere. You know, some people told me, oh, there's a prophet that prophesying, and the prophet will prophesy and tell you all the good things about your life. Why can't the prophet see that you're no longer prayerful? Why is it always when they prophesy, they tell you good, 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 good things? And all these nasty things, how you're going to get money, how you're going to get wealth. Why don't they tell you your life is to be in order? Why? Because you know what? Men are so happy. 
Don't, nobody wants to be told that. Put your heart in order. Nobody wants to be told that. So it gets me thinking that some of these prophecies are actually wrong prophecies. Sorry to say. It gets me thinking that people are happy to hear what they want to hear. Today, God is asking us to go back to this old-fashioned Christian living. Saying to you, don't be scared. If somebody, you know, I told you the story of bitter leaf. Anybody remember? Do you remember bitter leaf? Yeah. Bitter leaf is a very bitter stuff that the people in Africa used to, you know, it's a medicinal thing, yeah? Very bitter. Anybody drunk bitter tea, yeah? One, two, three, yeah, one, two, yeah. Bitter tea, yeah? Bitter tea is bitter, but bitter leaf is bitter, more bitter than bitter leaf. So I told you that one day my mom made bitter leaf for me. Bitter, yeah, bitter leaf. It was very bitter. And I was dreading how to eat that bitter leaf soup. I was thinking, <laughs> even before, I, might th I was thinking, huh, am I good to... And you know how you think, far, I was thinking that, ah, I have a solution. This is too bitter. I'm going to put sugar. <laughs> you know? So, so I went and I put a heap of sugar in it to mix it up because I didn't want to eat the bitter leaf. You know what? I couldn't eat anything because it was spoiled. I couldn't mix the bitter and the sweet together. What am I saying? Sometimes, the raw word of God that is bitter, hard to swallow, is good for us. Because if we don't take that raw word of God and let it come into our heart, and God tells us, repent, we'll just be floating on air. So tonight, let's stand on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's say to the powers of darkness, let's say to the wicked spirit, let's say to the one that are fighting us that we are not going to give up. Hallelujah. Let's say, no matter what you throw at me, I will stand. If you are fighting my marriage, I will love my wife more. If you are fighting my marriage, I will love my husband more. If you are trying to destroy me, I will stand more. Oh, hallelujah. If you are against my faith, I will go to church more. If you are against my Christianity, I will love God more. In everything you do against me, I will stand more because I know that the last days are here and because of that, I will run the rest higher and higher and higher. I'm ready for you, Jesus. Amen. Nothing will take me away. You may say, but Pastor William, you don't know my story. Let me tell you my story. My story is this. The day I lifted up my hands and I gave my life to Christ, nobody was there. My grandma wasn't there. My auntie wasn't there. I didn't ask anybody for advice. I said, Jesus, today, forgive me. That day was the day I said, I am going to go all the way. If you want to come with me, we'll go together. But if you're not coming, you want to be an obstacle, I will brush you outside and I keep going. Nobody will stop me from following my father. I am going to follow him all the way. And that kingdom of God, I'm going to go there. I will, even if anything happened to me, I will stumble again, I will rise up again, I will refresh, I will keep going. Today is your day. Today is your day. So we're going to rise up in our hearts. We're going to say, God, I'm not going to give up. So many things are happening. Like I preached last Sunday, refreshing. So many things are happening, clogging, clogging. Problem everywhere. Problem everywhere. It's only a problem. So what do you do? You lift up your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. If Jesus is on my side, I'm going to overcome. So right now, you and I are going to hold our hands together. And we're going to say, God, no devil, no challenge, no evil is going to destroy me. Stand up, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to play this song uh, 